In this video, I'm going to be putting together an off-meta build, testing it in some heroic content, but if I go down, I will delete the entire build. Hello and welcome, I'm Abrax and welcome to Off Meta, where I'll be taking a bad or underused piece of gear, exotic name gear, anything like that, and putting a build together around it. Then taking it into a heroic mission or control point to test the build out. However, if I'm downed or I'm killed, I will deconstruct the entire build, losing all of the gear, weapons, materials, and time I've put into it. The rules are simple, this is an off-meta build, so no Fox's Prayer, no Contractor's Gloves, and no Revive Hive, because that would be cheating. You good folks seem to enjoy the previous off-meta video using the Acosta's Go Bag, so I am more than happy to be making another. Last time I pulled the idea from a community post, but this time I wanted to have a look through the comments of the previous video, and this one caught my eye from the Awu Ghost. Maybe the newest exotic, Bloody Knuckles. Because it can't be meta if it's not been out long enough to be meta, right? So in this video, I will be using the Bloody Knuckles and creating a build around them, which, to be honest, will be pretty interesting. I don't really do close up very often. I'm more of a mid-ranged assault rifle kind of guy. So this definitely isn't playing to my strengths as a player. If you have an idea for an off-meta video, drop it in the comments and I might pick it up for the next one. It can be anything, a named item, gear set, exotic, or even a skill. As long as it's not part of the current meta, it's fair game. So obviously, when thinking about Bloody Knuckles, my mind almost straight away jumps to a melee build. Why not lean into its strengths, right? This build was clearly going to have to rely on a run-and-gun style of play. I could just throw on four pieces of Hunter's Fury, but that would be too eBay. Stupid autocorrect. That's just too easy. So first things first, I decided to load up on as much melee damage as possible, slinging the Lady Death SMG over my shoulder and digging through the stash to blow the dust off the claws out holster. That gives the build a base. Now time to fill in the gaps. I will give you a quick overview of the build, then we'll see if I get to keep it or not. The mask here is a Brazos mask with armor crit damage, armor regen, and more crit hit damage in the mod slot. I've decided on Brazos because I kind of have an idea for the skills, which might need an extra skill tier or two. So I am going for the two-piece brand set bonus. The chest is another piece of Brazos for that two-piece brand set bonus. Then I have armor, armor regen, and headshot damage for some reason, with more crit damage in the mod slot. I've got to say, some of the attributes for the off-meta builds won't be perfect, because I'm kind of working within a time limit to put the build and the video together. If anything, this just adds to the absurdity. For the chest talent, I decided on Obliterate, with it being a good damage talent for builds with a solid amount of crit chance. Like I said, the holster is Claws Out, a named holster with its claim to fame being its unique attribute of 500% melee damage. It also has 9% pistol damage, but I have no idea why, so... We'll just pretend that's not there, yeah? On my claws out, I've rolled the main attribute to weapon damage, and sadly for the mine attributes, I have repair skill. Because with this build, I have every intention of stupidly charging headfirst at everything in my way, I've decided on the Matador named Batpack. This comes with perfect adrenaline rush, giving me a nice boost of bonus armor, depending on how many enemies are around me. And I'm pretty sure I'll be needing this. For its attributes, I have armor, crit chance, headshot damage, and crit damage in the mod slot. For the gloves, I have, of course, bloody knuckles. These come with weapon damage, crit chance, and crit damage. For its talents, we have over the top. Damaging an enemy with a grenade or striking an enemy with a melee attack activates seeing red. Seeing red grants 25% weapon damage and 100% melee damage. Seeing red lasts 20 seconds and has a 60 second cooldown after completion. While in cooldown, damaging an enemy with a melee attack or hitting an enemy with the effect of a grenade will complete the cooldown instantly. This is pretty good. It's a fast way to get a good weapon damage and melee damage buff. To be honest, I wanted to lean into the melee damage buff from the gloves, but I feel like I've completely overshadowed them with the build having 1000% melee damage from the holster and lady death, but hey, an extra 100% won't hurt. And to round off the build, I'm bringing the improvised knee pads out of the stash with weapon damage, crit chance, crit damage, and more crit damage in the mod slot. For the primary, I am using the queen of run and gun Lady Death. This is for the 500% melee damage it gets from the underbarrel mod, and its talent giving the SMG a good kick and increasing my movement speed. For the secondary, I have the Mechanical Animal, with damage to targets out of cover for the rerollable attributes, crit chance in all of the mod slots, and the sturdy extended mag. 
I've gone for the mechanical animal to add a touch of range to the build, with the AR having pretty good accuracy. It does also come with future perfection, which will let me build up to three more skill tiers on kill, and this is kind of part of my backup plan in case things get out of hand. The spec I've got in the build is Technician, purely for that free skill tier. For the skills, really, if it was just me putting this build together, I'd 100% have the Crusader Shield for some extra protection. But I do think it's a pretty overused skill and it might end up slowing me down a little, which goes against how I see this going. So, thinking outside of the box, I've gone for the Decoy and the Assault Turret. Why? This is because both of these skills pull aggro, so hopefully both of them together pull enough attention away from me so I can get in there and start smacking people around with my overly decorated SMG. Plus, the turret's kind of my ace in the hole. If I do get into any trouble, I can take cover, throw out the tier 2 turret, switch to the mechanical animal, and give it a good boost all the way up to skill tier 5, which will do a fair amount of damage. Alright, we've gone over the build as it came together and how my thought process went as I was putting it together. Let's talk about how I want it to play. This is built as a homebrew running gun build, so here is the loop. Charge in like a madman with Lady Death in hand, building the SMG damage buff with the movement. As I charge in, I am going to drop the decoy and throw the turret, pulling the attention away from me and towards the skills. While the enemies are distracted, I'm going to use melee, taking advantage of the 1000% melee damage I natively have, and proccing Seeing Red on Bloody Knuckles for the 25% weapon damage and extra 100% melee damage. Using the 25% weapon damage buff and the damage buff from Lady Death to do damage and clear the encounter. So, run, drop skills, punch, shoot. That's how I see it going, but whether or not that's what happens, we will have to see. Over to future me to see if I get to keep this build this time round. So the mission I am running for this one is Grand Washington because I haven't played it for a while. It's on Heroic, this is the build. Let's take it in, see how it plays and give it a go. So the goal here, ideally, Skills for distraction, and then I run around and I punch stuff. Fun fact, if you don't know where the loot room is in this level, I will show you in this video. Here is the key. So the next room is quite big. I'm gonna throw my turret. I'm gonna use the turret and mechanical animal for a chunk of damage until there's only a few of them left. Then I'll probably move in and start just slapping them. So this room has a pretty good flank point. We can go up the stairs to the right. So the plan is to wait for a few seconds while the decoy comes off drink coffee, get disappointed by the empty cup of coffee. Oh, this is actually gone. Very wrong. So yeah, my plan was to flank, but they kind of did. Should we use the spec weapon? Who uses the spec weapon? If you use your spec weapon, let me know in the comments below. That did me a solid, okay. This was a bad mission for the melee everything's just too far away. And let's be completely honest, we all know if I ran headfirst into any of these groups with the intention of smacking them around, it wouldn't end well for me. Is that the last person? I'm just gonna run around. Kapow. Or, <laughs> eh. The damage still feels lackluster with the melee, with all of that damage. I almost won 1000% extra melee damage, or that, it, at that point, that was 1,100%. I want that to be doing a good amount of damage. I think that was like 500k. That's not good. When we're considering that Lady Death with the buff is doing like 372k, right? And that's on three red courts. That's not even on six red courts. That's just three. That's not enough melee damage. I want more. I want a thousand percent to feel like you're kind of really doing damage. Because it's not how I play, right? I play medium to long distance with an AR. That's how I, that's my preferred kind of way to play this game. Running gun just doesn't feel good. Especially in a video like this where I'm putting a lot at stake. I'm putting my only pair of bloody knuckles, my lady death, and a claws out, which is a DZ exclusive. Plus this pair of improvised knee pads, which I really like. So I don't want to go down. So running gun is making me pretty nervous. And the lack of coffee was a bad omen. So I think live or die, when I end this mission, I think we need to talk about bloody knuckles. A melee build in theory is a really cool idea, but the time to kill in the division two is so low. Just 
natively. It's just so low. I don't know if a melee build is really viable. I would like it to be. I would like to try a melee build. I'm just spitballing here, but maybe if they also gave you some kind of resistance for a time. So, let's say you run in, you do a melee, you get 100% extra melee damage, but then you also get, I don't know, a amount of bonus armor too. That way, the risk is running in and getting the hit, because you're still running into a hail of bullets. But then the reward is the fact that when you're in there, you can just cause chaos. Because I am so hesitant to get in and do melee and things like that, because I know I will get in, I will hit one, I will get the buff, I will get gunned down. All of the confidence during the build-making process has gone out the window when I start playing and remember just how kind of the effect it can have. Earlier we got the key card. When you come around this corner, you're facing down this hallway where everything is already dead. This door here, an interact. You can't interact with this if you didn't get the key card, but I just thought for those of you new to the game, if you didn't know this little loot room was here, have some free loot and deconstruct everything because we need materials, more materials. I just have to highlight. That's that's a keeper right there. So as much as I want to run around punching people, it's, uh, it's just, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's viable enough. I don't think the idea, like, like I said slightly earlier, um, I don't think the idea of a mellow build right now is a viable thing without something to really increase your survivability. I mean, you could roll six blue cores and run around punching people, but you're not doing enough damage to warrant that. It doesn't, there's no, there's no payoff. You're just kind of being a nuisance to them and eventually you'll just get gunned down because you're not doing enough damage. It's, it's not viable and that makes me sad. Like here, I've, I've put together a build with the intention of it being um, a melee focused running gun brawler build. If I go out there, I'm not going to, because I really like these knee pads and the gloves and my lady death. But if I did, if I just run out and start hitting people, I would not last. Three blue cores, I wouldn't last. I would get gunned down very, very, very quick. I know it, you know it. I mean, maybe this would work going the polar opposite as a sniper build. Build up a sniper build, maybe run it with Mantis or Nemesis and use the turret and the decoy to pull attention. So you can then just go headshot, 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 headshot. I feel like this is a build that could work for somebody. I don't know if it's a build for heroic. It might be a build if you wanna just chuck it on hard or challenging and just have a bit of a kind of badass run around smacking people about moment. But as a heroic build, it just doesn't kind of tick my boxes, so to speak. And yes, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use the minigun. Don't give me that look. Beard clip through mask. It's good look. It's good look. It's not actually clipping through the mask. He's just poked it through the holes. I would like a minigun helper. I'd like a little skill. I can stick on a minigun and be like, just, just do stuff. Suppress. That's a cool idea for a skill. Something that will suppress, like a turret variation that works more on suppressing. That would be really useful. That would that would make a running gun build legitimately really useful. It could be a turret with shocking accuracy because that's not its job. Its job isn't necessarily to do damage. Yeah, the accuracy could just be bad, but it could force enemies to be suppressed. Kind of like that. I'd use that. Oh, this is tedious. Dear Massive. Please, stop making this door's health scale with the difficulty. Please? I don't want to look at the activity summary. This is a short mission. And it took me 23 minutes. I'm not okay with this. So, initial thoughts and notes on the build. Not for me. I don't like it. Running gun's fine. Running gun works, but it needs something else to it. So, Hunter's Fury creates that kind of... Uh, Disrupt? It disrupts, right? 
So anything that's near you, they get knocked out for a second and you can just kind of charge through, taking them out. Without that, you essentially run in and just get focused on. And even with my plan here of dropping the skills for aggro, which did work, it's not enough. You still get close enough to the point where the NPC will go, eh, no, you instead. And then you're kind of stuck out in the open, focused on, with no real resilience. It would be nice to maybe have um, a talent or an addition to Bloody Knuckles that gives you additional resistance or armor or bonus armor or like invulnerability for five seconds with a chunky cooldown. So you can't spam it, but it gives you a chance to run in, hit, and then just cause chaos for five seconds and then kind of retreat back. As it is right now, not a fan of this build. I don't think I'll keep this. I have kept the Mad Bomber build from the previous um, off meta, but this one, I don't think I'll keep. I'm keeping the components. I ain't dismantling them. You can, yeah. But yeah, it's not staying in my loadouts. This one can go. This one can go. So something this build has taught me is that a high-end melee build doesn't really work for me. I think it's something that could be fun, but it needs a little bit of something else to make it work. For example, the Bloody Knuckle Gloves. What if they had bonus armor on melee hit? Not something that stacks, but something that resets on every hit. And this wouldn't be enough bonus armor to make you indestructible, but just enough for it to be viable for you to get into the thick of it and start smacking people around a little. It could also be used as a bit of a lifesaver if your armor gets low and there might happen to be an enemy nearby. So, the build. Like all builds in the Division 2, someone out there will have space for a flanking, run-and-gun melee build, but for me personally, it just doesn't click with my usual playstyle. I'm usually very chilled, sticking to mid to long range with an assault rifle and a ton of burst damage. I do enjoy a good Hunter's Fury build with how the gear set functions, but this one just didn't really do it for me. Although it is heroic viable, I just think it's not going to stay in my loadout for very long. If you enjoyed this different take on a build video, let me know by leaving a comment with a random, underused, or just bad piece of gear or weapon in the Division 2 that you'd like to see in a future off-meta video. And while you're down there, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe for future Division 2 content. As always, a massive thank you to my supporters over on Patreon for helping me make this channel the best it can be. And if you would like to join them, you can support the channel for as little as £1 a month. You'll find a link for the Patreon in the description below. Have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.